Okay, hi everyone. Second lecture here on chapter 11, right? We were talking last time about, hey, there's three different types of assets. Uh, in the context of a disposition event, right? The amount realized minus the adjusted basis gives you the gain or loss, right? The realized gain or loss. We said that uh, generally capital assets, that gain or loss, if we recognize it, could get uh, you know preferential treatment, assuming it's a long-term capital gain. Uh, ordinary assets are going to be taxed at the ordinary tax rate. And then 1231 assets, because they're a long-term asset, are going to get the preferential rate. And when we talked about 1231, right, we said that's comprised of 1245 property, generally personal property used in a business, 1250 property, real property used in a business, again, long term, more than one year. And we were picking things up and saying, hey, you know, when you buy that machine right here, you may depreciate it you know, throughout its life, right? Whenever you depreciate it, right? Depreciation is an expense, which the bigger the expense, the less income you have. And your income, right? Uh, depreciation expense, that's gonna potentially offset up to 37% tax rate on there, right? So that's kind of like, you know, a smiley. That's great. Every time you depreciate it, you're you know offsetting like you know high high tax rate income. On the flip side, when you go to sell, you know that piece of property. Okay, we are going to use our amount realized minus adjusted basis, right? Imagine we were at a gain. You also get the smiley because uh, 1231 assets. Uh, are the best of both worlds, right? If you sell them at a gain, they get the preferential rate, smiley. If you sell them at a loss, they can offset ordinary income, smiley. The setup here is the IRS does not like giving you like infinite benefits, right? It's not like you get unlimited smiley. So they don't like it that you're getting a smiley here when you depreciate it, and then a smiley on the back end when you sell it. So what they do is they're going to say, hey, you know, this depreciation you took, we're going to recapture that, right? And recapture basically means we're going to, hey, this gain that you had, maybe it's a $100 gain, right? To the extent that gain was caused by depreciation, we're going to reclassify that portion of the gain as ordinary income. So maybe we took like, $30 of depreciation over there. So 30 of that gain will be taxed at ordinary rates. And 70 of that gain, yeah, we'll give you the smiley on preferential rates. That's like a very like high level conceptual, right? Depreciation or capture tries to make it more of a neutral face, right? They don't want to give you the double smiley. How they get you there is they reclassify some of the gain as ordinary income on there. Now, how we apply these depreciation recapture rules depends on the type of property, right? If we're looking at 1245 property, right, which is gonna be used for individuals and corporations, then there's three scenarios. Uh, the first scenario is where all of the gain we're gonna recapture and treat as ordinary income. Some of the gain we're going to recapture as ordinary income. So this sum was like what I just looked at were like 30 and 70. And then, you know, in certain situations, there is no recapture, like if we sell it at a loss, right? So that's personal property. If it's real property, right, what you're going to then do is look at the taxpayer, right? So if this is an individual, right, maybe they're, you know, have a Schedule C or something, uh, then we're going to have one set of rules versus if it's a corporation, we'll have you know another set on there. So this is like a primer for where we're going on it. This will make more sense if like you watch the video, come back and look at this slide. But let's start over here, right? Personal property. We said there's three scenarios for depreciation recapture, right? So uh, this is just telling you about like what is depreciation recapture. 
uh, right? It's like they, they don't want to give you that double dip, right? So they're trying to take the two smileys and uh, make it more of like a neutral face. Remember, all we're doing with depreciation recapture is changing the character of the gain, right? We're not like recalculating the gain. If it's a hundred bucks when we did amount realized minus adjusted basis, then it's going to be a hundred bucks. What depreciation recapture says is of that $100 gain, how much of it is going to be taxed at ordinary income rates, uh, normally the amount you took of depreciation, versus how much of it will you get the preferential rates, the smiley. One thing interestingly, right, depreciation recapture applies even if the taxpayer chooses not to depreciate it, right? So in other words, Say you had a taxpayer and they're just like, I've heard of this depreciation recapture thing. I want nothing to do with it. So I'm just not going to depreciate it. I don't care. I don't want that headache on the back end. If you do that, the IRS will still impute and treat it as if you took depreciation on it, even if you didn't, right? So then we go a little bit into our chart here, right? We said specifically how you calculate depreciation depends on the type of property. We're going to start with 12 45 property, right? Generally personal property used in a business uh, or intangible property. We have three scenarios here, right? The one thing to be aware of in these scenarios is, right? Whenever you have kind of linking this back to the last lecture, you have your initial basis minus your accumulated depreciation, your cost recovery gives you your adjusted basis. In this way, right, your amount realized minus your adjusted basis gives you your gain or loss, right? So the, the framework with this is the more you depreciate, right, the lower the adjusted basis. The lower the adjusted basis, the bigger the gain, right? So you can kind of see this like, oh, okay, if we depreciate something, we're gonna have a bigger gain on the flip side. Now we need to look at that gain and say, hey, was this gain, did the only reason we have it is because we depreciated the item? Alternatively, scenario two, was this gain, how much of it was caused by this sort of like logic framework versus how much of it was caused by the amount realized going up due to asset appreciation? And then the third scenario where it's at a loss, there is no depreciation recapture. So scenario one, right? The idea here is the entire gain, you run the formula, amount realized minus adjusted basis, maybe there's like a $50 gain. All 50 of that is going to be taxed at ordinary income. So let's look at an example here showing this. Right, so we have a taxpayer, they sell a machine for $300,000. Disposition event, their adjusted basis is 228. Right, they have a $71,000 gain on there. But we know, right, if they started with 610 and then they depreciate it, the more they depreciate, the lower the basis. The lower the basis, the bigger the gain on here. So in this scenario, what we're gonna do is Right, we're gonna pick our little like rule here is gonna pick the lesser of the accumulated depreciation 381 or the gain, right? The lower of those two is gonna be what we recapture, right? So in other words, here, yes, we have a $71,000 gain uh, on there. Of that amount, 71 is gonna be taxed as ordinary income, and zero will be taxed at the preferential rate. Right? In other words, this entire gain, the only reason we had this gain was because we depreciated it and we modified the basis there. Right? And this is just saying down here, right? we don't change the number on it. Right? The math is the math in this formula. Instead, what we do is we change the character. Right? The 71 is the 71. It's just what way or at what rate are we going to tax this? Uh, on there. So that's scenario one of 1245. Here we have scenario two and you know we run the numbers amount realized minus adjusted basis 
Uh, in this scenario, the gain was caused uh, partly by depreciation, but also by asset appreciation. So in this way, we have to break out the gain uh, that we calculate and divide between what do we recapture, that's taxed at ordinary rates, versus the leftover, right, is going to be taxed at the preferential rates because it's a 1231 asset. Look at a different thing here. Sell it for 620. The adjusted basis is 228, 391 gain on there. We started with 610, depreciated at 381. That's how we got the 228. In this way, right, what's going on is, right, we have a $391,000 gain on there, right? So this should just be like 391, not a big deal there. Uh, it says of this amount, right, if we were to look at it, um, of the 391, right, what we first do is we say, oh, we got to take back all that depreciation, right? So 381 of it, we're going to classify as ordinary income. That was the recapture, right? But the gain was 391, right? That was 381. There's kind of 10, right? That's going to be our leftovers, right? Our leftover, right? This is going to be taxed at the preferential rate, right? In other words, what caused this portion of the gain, the 381, that was caused just by the math, right? The functional math. Whereas down here, right? The 10, that was caused by the asset actually going up in value, right? So it's kind of like step one, figure out your gain. Step two, right? Step one, figure out your gain. Step two, recapture the depreciation. It could be in scenario one that your entire gain is recaptured, right? But recapture your depreciation. Step three, to the extent there's any leftover, that will be taxed at the preferential rate on there. Finally, here we have scenario three, right? You sell this thing at a loss. Well, if you sell it at a loss, there is no depreciation recapture. All right, so if we look at this scenario, oh, we depreciated it. We run the numbers, we're at a loss. Well, in this way, right, it's a 1231 loss. We'll get the smiley in the sense that it can offset ordinary income. We don't have to apply depreciation recapture rules in loss situations on that. So that was 11.8, let's look at 11.9, right? This is, you can read through this on 11.9, kind of looking at those scenarios, right? So if we go back to our little cheat sheet, that's great, we can put the check mark there. We said, hey, whenever you sell personal property, step one, figure out the gain or loss, amount realized minus adjusted basis. Step two, to the extent you took depreciation, you reclassify uh, the, that amount of the gain as ordinary income. Step three, whatever is left over of the gain is going to be taxed at the preferential rates. And of course, if you sell it at a loss, then there is no depreciation or capture. That's great. That's one half of the battle here. Now let's move over to real property. Right, so this could be like an apartment building, it could be a rental unit, it could be a warehouse, right? In this case, we have to look at the type of taxpayer involved, right? So it says here uh, for individuals, right? 1250, right? Real property. So I don't know, maybe you're a landlord, right? You own a rental property, right? It says here depreciable real property is sold at a gain, not a loss is subject to depreciation recapture. Specifically, under 1250 depreciation recapture, when property is sold at a gain, depreciation recapture is limited to the additional depreciation. And when we say that word, it means the excess of accelerated depreciation deductions over the amount that would have been depreciated if the taxpayer used straight line depreciation. One thing here is, right, one of the things they're looking at is, oh, we're gonna redo it as if you use straight line. Well, guess what, right? If you remember from the depreciation recapture, most of the time we are using straight line on these properties, right? It's like, you know, 27 and a half and 39 year property straight line. 
So for that reason, if we were to just look at it, you know, under one provision of the law, you know, under this specific provision, there is typically, because we depreciated straight line, no depreciation recapture uh, on there. However, we will see moving forward, there are other provisions in play, right? So that's kind of the starting point. We looked at individuals. We said there's depreciation recapture to the extent there's additional depreciation, but that might not necessarily arise given how we depreciate the item. If we're talking about corporations, however, right, there's another tax section that comes into play, namely section 291. And what this says is, right, it says while section 1250 depreciation or capture is mostly irrelevant because we're already doing straight line, there are other special rules that apply to C-Corps and individuals. Starting with C-Corps, right, they're subject to Section 291, depreciation recapture. And essentially what happens here is, right, a corporation selling depreciable real property, right, they recapture it as ordinary income, some of that gain. And how the calculation is, is you basically take 20% times the lesser of the recognized gain or the amount of accumulated depreciation. Let's look at 1110. All right, it says, assume we have a corporation, right? So we're looking at a C-Corp. They sell a warehouse, 1250 property, add a gain on there. Uh, how do we analyze this, right? Well, first thing we say, you know, the initial provision 1250, not really going to come into play because we're already using straight line. There is no additional depreciation. However, there still is section 291, Right, and section 291 says this, right? Figure out your gain, right? $90,000, and then pick the lesser of the amount you depreciated it or your gain. So, what's lesser, 50 or 90, right? Uh, 15 there. And then what you do is you do 15 times 20%, right? That's always a fixed percent. There's $3,000. So, essentially, what's going on here, right? We have a C Corp that has section 291 in play, we calculated a $90,000 gain of this amount, right? $3,000 we're gonna have classified as ordinary. And then, um, you know, the remaining at 87 is gonna be like the leftovers. That's, you know, potentially preferential income uh, for purposes of a C corp, it would still be taxed at 21%, but where it's preferential is it has the capability of uh, and can you know, use other capital losses to offset it, right? So it's uh, almost like that example where we talked about the Amazon stock and the Apple stock. Well, you get something out of it on there. So that was the special provision for C corps. Right. So we said, uh, you know, that's the setup. How about for individuals? Right. Again, we said 1250, the typical depreciation recapture rules, not going to be applicable because there is no depreciation recapture. However, right, we have other provisions that come into play. And this time when we're looking at individuals, it says this. Right. Individual taxpayers have to treat the gain from 1250 property as a 1231 gain and net it with other 1231 gains and losses to determine if there's a net 1231 or gain or loss for the year. If after the netting process, it's a long-term capital gain, then what you do is, right, a portion of that gain caused by depreciation recapture uh, is called unrecaptured 1250 gain. Magic number here is 25%, right? So what's going on here, right? I know it's a mouthful. It's like, it's hard to kind of conceptualize, uh, we sell, we're an individual, maybe we have a rental property. We sell it, amount realized, minus adjusted basis. Hey, we have a $100 realized gain. Of that amount, right, to the extent the gain was caused by depreciation, right, so like the depreciation portion, I don't know, maybe 30 of it, right, we're going to multiply... Um, times 25%, 
whatever the leftover is, you know, after we run the math on that, you're going to get the preferential rate. There is a netting process for 1231. Don't worry about that for the exam. It's not going to be any more difficult than just like a one shot. Uh, it's an individual. They sell you know, real property. It's a C Corp. A, a better analysis or understanding would be uh, like this kind of, you know, 1245, right? We have the three scenarios, 1250, you have to look at the two different types of taxpayers. One is 25%, the other is 20 on there. Let's look again at an example here to give this some numbers on here. All right, we have an individual, they sell a warehouse for a $90,000 gain. All right, that's great. An individual, they sell real property, that's 1250. Real property, we know they probably depreciated it straight line, so there is no depreciation recapture in that sense. However, we have other rules, right? And the rule here says calculate the gain, step one. Step two is pick the lesser of the accumulated depreciation or the gain, right? So 15 or 90. Here it's 15, right? That amount is going to be taxed at 25%. In other words, we have a 90 gain, right? 15 of that gain uh, will be taxed at a 25% rate and the remaining 75, right, like the leftover, right, it will get the preferential rate, the smiley rate, the zero, the 15 or 20% on there. Um, one of the other things to be aware of here, right? So, uh, you know, in that situation with depreciation recapture, if we were to build on kind of sales of property, you do have to be aware of kind of like related party transactions, right? So say we have like Mario and Luigi, they're like kind of brothers and they sell a piece of property between them. Uh, it's easy to manipulate kind of the sales price and things like that when they're related parties. So the IRS comes in and says, hey, to make sure that you're doing this fairly, and it's really a kind of like an arm's length transaction, we have uh, various rules and mechanisms that come into play on here. And it basically says, hey, under section 1239, when a taxpayer, the seller, right, we'll just put Mario, when they sell property to a related person, we'll just say Luigi, right? And that property is depreciable to the buyer, right? So maybe Luigi is going to take this mushroom, put it in his business as like an asset or something and depreciate it. Then what happens is uh, the entire gain on the sale is ordinary income to Mario, right? What happens here, right? What's going on here? It's meant to uh, essentially stop the following. If we didn't have this setup, right, what happens here is Mario sells that mushroom, he gets a long-term capital gain, right? That's a smiley face. Um, and then what happens is Luigi gets it, the mushroom, he's depreciating it in there as well, right? And offsetting potentially ordinary income. So he gets the smiley face. You could see how this situation, right, could just be like sort of manipulated between them uh, on there. So the, that, that's what the IRS says here. And really a related person, a related party, this is an, uh, a situation where an individual uh, in their controlled corporation or partnership, a taxpayer in any trust in which the taxpayer or spouse is a beneficiary um, in there. Let's look at 11, 12, 11, 13. It says taxpayer is the sole shareholder of a C Corp. Uh, it looks like they sell, um, you know, personal use equipment to the C Corp for ninety thousand dollars. Thus, the taxpayer two seller sells property to a buyer. Taxpayer three, the property is depreciable to the buyer. So what's going on here is right. Uh, we have an amount realized of ninety, an adjusted basis of eighty. Uh, on there, so they sell it for 90, their basis is 80. Uh, in that way, there's a $10,000 gain, right? They may say, right, well, this $10,000 gain from Mario, right, what comes in here is 
essentially we're going to have to treat this even though it is long-term capital gain 1231 asset because it's a related party transaction we then essentially treat it as ordinary income on there uh, one thing to be aware of and i'm going to kind of wrap up the lecture here is there is a netting process for 1231s gains and losses, right? So like say you sold multiple machines, you sold multiple pieces of property. In the same way where you, uh, you know, you do that with like capital assets where there's a process, do be aware just uh, theoretically that there is a netting process on there. And uh, there's ways where in that netting process, you can kind of strategically dispose of assets on there, but do be aware that the IRS has this look back rule where they essentially say, hey, we're going to go back five years. We reserve the right to go back five years and make sure that you know, you're recapturing or recharacterizing re uh, any gains that you should have that you should have done. They call this like the look back window. Not worried about this for the exam 1113. The reason for this is there's so much information on depreciation recapture up here. I'd rather have you focus, you know, on this guy right here, know the basics, understand what is depreciation recapture, why do we care about it, than like a very granular you know, netting process, you know, so on and so forth. So uh, I'm going to end the lecture here. So there'll be three lectures for this series. It's just kind of a good stopping point because uh, after this, Right, we're going to look at other ways of disposing assets. So up until now, right, we just said, okay, you dispose of an asset, amount realized minus adjusted basis. Amount realized is generally the fair market value of what you receive. Adjusted basis is your initial basis, four ways you can acquire it. You buy it, you can get it as a gift, you can inherit it, you can convert it from personal to business use. Typically, it's just going to be you buy at your cost as your adjusted basis. Um, and then the difference between those two, namely your amount realized and your adjusted basis, gives you your gain or loss in a sale capacity. And we said, hey, when you sell capital assets, there's one treatment. When you sell uh, ordinary assets, there's one treatment. When you sell 1231 assets, there's a certain type of treatment. And oh, by the way, if you sell 1231 assets, we have this thing called depreciation recapture, right? We're not going to give you the double dip. Some of the gain when you run amount realized minus adjusted basis will be classified as ordinary income taxed at ordinary rates and whatever is left over will be taxed at those preferential rates as a 1231 asset. Get the basics down. I will see you in the next lecture.